So I want to start this night by just looking at a couple different things here in Proverbs chapter 14. And if you notice while I was reading, uh, the, you know, it talks a lot about fools in this chapter. You know, the book of Proverbs actually addresses fools quite a bit. But it says several different things in here. For, in, for instance, in verse 3, it says, In the mouth of the, foolishness, of the foolish is a rod of pride. So it tells us a lot about the different characteristics about the, the foolish people. And one of them is that they're very proud people. And often when you find a very proud person, you know, you find somebody who's very proud. And very proud people are people who really can't be told anything. They're the type of people you can't teach them anything. They already kind of know everything. And it's unfortunate, especially when they are unsaved people. And we'll look at it here in a minute. But even, it's even unfortunate that many saved people can even live as fools or have a foolish mentality. But it's especially sad when it's an unsaved person who is you know, hardened or, and, and, and lifted up in pride against the Word of God. And they scorn and they mock the Word of God. And if you would look there in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 6, it says, A scorner seeketh wisdom, but findeth it, and findeth it not. So here you have somebody perhaps that wants to have wisdom. They're seeking wisdom, but because they're a scorner, because they're somebody who mocks and ridicules, because they're somebody who thinks they already kind of know everything, that you can't really teach them anything, they're not going to find it. You know, wisdom is found of people that have a humble attitude, people that are seeking it for the right reason, people who are willing to expect, accept the truth for what it is. <clears throat> and scorners, you know, they don't even recognize the truth often when they see it. Uh, we'll sometimes, you'll see this when we go out, you know, I'm talking to the, the evening crowd, so I'm talking, you know, primarily here tonight to soul winners. You know, we'll go out and we'll knock on these doors and we'll present the truth to somebody. And, you know, the truth's right in front of their face. They have an opportunity to hear it. They're this close to hearing the gospel. But because they're scorners, because they're mockers, they're not going to find it. You know, their pride and their scorning is going to keep them from understanding and wisdom and especially from the knowledge and understanding that comes with salvation, the knowledge of salvation. It's unfortunate. But here's the thing, you know, God doesn't give understanding to people who know it all. And this is something we got to guard against in our life, is reaching this point in our Christian life where we think, well, we've just got it all figured out now. You know, we've been around long enough, and we understand everything, and you can't teach us anything new. You know, we get this know-it-all mentality you know, God's not going to reveal any more truth to a person like that. A person who thinks that they've... I mean, what are you going to teach the guy who knows it all, right? And that's what scorners are. They seek wisdom, but they find it not. They can look and look and look, but because of their attitude, because of their pride, because of the way they feel about how they know everything, they're not going to find it. And if you would, keep something in Proverbs 14. And go over to, uh, go over to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Because here's the thing, God doesn't give understanding to people who know it all. And sometimes the people who, who act like they, uh, you know, they, they've got it all figured out and they know everything are some of the biggest fools you'll ever meet. Yep. <clears throat> and look here in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 24, it says, Because I have called and ye refru- refused, I stretched out my hand and no man regarded So it's, they don't find it. Be, it's not, the reason why the scorner does not find wisdom is not because it's hidden. It's not because truth isn't available. It's not because God isn't, you know, as he says, they're stretching out his hand. It's because they have refused. It's because they said, no, I don't need that. And we know it reminds us of, you know, the reprobates of Romans chapter 1, where it says that, the, that because that which may, may, know, may, may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. You know, God reveals himself. The Bible says that he lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And it says that for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, nobody's going to have the excuse of, well, I didn't know. I, wasn't know. I didn't know if there was a God. The Bible says it's evident. The Bible says that he is stretching out his hand. The problem with the scorner is they don't regard. They call, he calls, they refuse. He stretch, out, he stretch out their hand and they do not regard it. They say, I already got this figured out. They're, they're proud, they're scorners. The Bible says in Proverbs 19, verse 1, the heavens of the declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. I mean, we can look at the stars, we can look at the heavens, and it's obvious that there's a creator. And people have to talk themselves out of that. They have to go to some textbook, they have to go to some you know, a school or some place where somebody can sit them down and teach them a bunch of lies 
and try to you know, convince them that there is no God. But if we, in just a simple innocence, just a simple, humble faith, look at the stars, and how can there not be a creator when we consider you know, the complexity of creation and so on and so forth? The Bible says in Psalms 19, verse 2, Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night show, showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Look, nobody has the excuse of saying, well, I didn't know. Their line is going out through, through all the earth. Their words unto the end of the world. I mean, creation just testifies to everybody that there is a God. I know when I, before I got saved, and I've probably shared the story up here before, but I remember I spent many nights when I was living in the Caribbean looking up at those magnificent skies at night, just filled with stars. Like, you, you know, because when, when you get away from all the light pollution, man, it's just, it's breathtaking, right? Is that not a word I'm supposed to use? <laughs> there, I said it. I saved you, brother. I used it right from the pulpit. It's breathtaking, Amen. okay? Because it is. Yep. You know, it's something, you, you, you step back and you just, you behold those stars Amen. and you're in wonder you're in, and you're in amazement and you feel very small, Right? And that's what the Bible's saying here in Psalms 19, is that the heavens declare the glory of God, that nobody has this excuse, that anybody who wants to reject God and say there is no God, you know what they are? They're a scorner. They're a fool. And they're full of pride. And here's the thing. People reap from God what they sow from God. That's a very true statement. The Bible says you reap what you sow. You know? If we sow to the flesh, we all the flesh reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, we shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You're there in Proverbs 1 still? Uh, I'm sorry, you should be back in Proverbs. Yeah, Proverbs chapter, uh, is that right? Let me, let me just double check. I'm gonna, yes, Proverbs chapter 1. Let me just make sure that I didn't mess that up in my notes. Proverbs chapter 1, I'm going to be looking at uh, <coughs> verse 25. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. God says, you want to reject me? You want to mock me? You want to scorn me? Well, I'm going to, you know, you're going to reap what you've sown. I'm just going to do the same thing to you when your calamity comes. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. And they, and, and they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge. They were scorners. They are mockers. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. It's not that God wasn't reaching out. It wasn't that God had made it evident that He existed. It wasn't that God wasn't stretching out His hand. It's that they just refused and refused and refused and rejected and rejected and rejected. But finally God said, fine. And when your fear and your calamity and your destruction comes, I'm going to do the same thing right back to you. And that's, some, that's, a, you know, that's a chilling... Uh, you know, it's a chilling aspect of God's nature that a lot of people don't want to, don't want to pretend this is, isn't there. And that it's not, that's not how God works. But that's what the Bible's saying here. That you can reach a point with God where he just is not going to listen. He said they would none of my counsel. He was there to counsel. He wanted. They despised all my proof. He reproved. He worked. He ministered. But they rejected and rejected and rejected. So people reap from God what they sow from God. And you say, well, I don't know if that's right. I don't think if I agree with that, that God would do that to somebody. But here's the thing. God is justified to keep the truth from fools. I mean, what good is it going to do him anyway? What good is it to give truth to a fool? What's he going to do with it? Nothing. He's too proud. He's too puffed up. He's too much of a know-it-all to do anything good with it anyway. So why would God give it to a person like that? He giveth grace unto the humble, the Bible says. And God is justified to keep the truth from fools. And I would go even further than that and say that fools and mockers and scoffers, these type of people, they all deserve what they have coming. They deserve it. When God does all these things, when he, when, when he you know, refuses to hear from them, when he laughs at their calamity, say, man, that sure doesn't, that doesn't sound very nice of God, but they deserve what they have coming. They've reap, they're reaping what they've sown. <clears throat> if you're there in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter, I um, just want to make sure I'm turning to the right passages here. Proverbs chapter 14, I believe. Proverbs chapter 14. No, that's not right. 
the Bible says, somewhere in Proverbs, <laughs> I'm not sure where I got this note, but it says, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. They deserve what they have coming. But on the same hand, in the same token, in the same way, you know, so do the meek, so do the humble, so do the believing. They also deserve what they have coming, don't they? He said, Whosoever hearkeneth unto me, I believe this is Proverbs chapter 1, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Yes, that's where it was. Proverbs 31, 1 verse 31. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning of the way of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Look, the fools, the mockers, the scoffers deserve what they have coming to them. But so do those that hearken and hearkeneth unto me. They shall dwell safely, it says in verse 33. They shall be quiet from fear of evil. Why? Because they were the ones that when God reproved, when God stretched out his hand, when God gave his counsel, they were the ones that were humble enough and meek enough to receive it and to apply it to their lives. They weren't scoffers. They weren't mockers. They weren't fools. When the God was willing to help and, and do all these things for them, they were willing to receive it. <coughs> and so, um, this is all introduction, but what I'm leading up to is this, is that we should not feel sorry for the fools of this world. You know, sorry, Mr. T, don't pity the fool. <laughs> I almost wrote that down. I was like, we shouldn't pity fools. And like instantly I just saw that. And I'm like, man, some of that stuff just gets in there and it's ingrained, you know. Thanks a lot, you know. But it's true, you know. Mr. T was wrong. Don't pity the fool. You know, we should not feel sorry for them. They deserve what they have coming to them. Whether it's, you want to talk about if somebody rejecting God, rejecting Christ all the way to hell, God, that, they still deserve hell. That's a fact. We all do. It's just that some of us are humble enough and meek enough to receive Christ as Savior. Whether that's even a saved person who's just rejecting counsel, rejecting reproof, rejecting all the help that's being offered to them through the preaching of the Word of God and so on and so forth, and they begin to reap what they've sown in their life, I'm not going to sit back and feel sorry for that person. They've reaped what they've sown. <clears throat> and here's the title of the sermon tonight, is Flee from Fools. Flee from Fools. You know, people want to sit around too often and just get a soft spot for foolish people, for scorners, for mockers, for scoffers, when the Bible says we should flee from them. Are you there in Proverbs chapter 14, where we started tonight? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, <coughs> let's go back to verse 6 again, a scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not. Why? Why does he not find it? it not, be, not because it's not there, it's because he can't receive it or that God has hidden it from him. <clears throat> but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Verse 7, Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. You know what that tells me? One thing about this is that fools like to talk. Fools like to run their mouth. They like to tell everybody uh, everything that they think they know. It was, there was another verse that you know, came to mind. I'm trying to find it right now. But... <clears throat> Fools like to talk, you know, and that's why it says, uh, again, you know, fools, uh, uh, to, to flee from him when thou perceivest not, uh, 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 go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge, the lips of knowledge, you know, a mouth that's going to speak right things and teach true things and teach biblical things. When the guy that is, you know, a fool is just spouting off foolishness and saying dumb, stupid things, we're to flee from that person. You know, it's pointless to sit there and try to you know, debate that individual yeah. to try and engage them in some kind of dialogue because they're a fool and they are, they're a know-it-all half the time. That what's, that's what makes them uh, so foolish. The Bible says in verse 33, wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. You know, a fool can't keep it in. You know, they just, they can't keep it in. They have to let everybody know how much they think they know, or how much they've got figured out, and how much you don't know. And the Bible says that uh, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a, a man of understanding will draw it out. You know, it's like going to a well and having to lower the bucket and get that water and pull it up. It takes effort. 
you know, you don't just walk by the, the well and it just spits water at you. You know, that's what understanding is like in a truly wise person. They don't just, you know, they're not a, they're not a lawn sprinkler. You know, just everybody that walks by is going to get some. That's a fool. The wise man is the guy, the, the wisdom's there. But if you want to find out what that guy knows or that lady knows, you're going to have to go to them, talk to them, and draw that out. And even then, you might not get it because a lot of times that person is going to ask themselves, a wise person is going to say, what are they, what is, is this even going to benefit them? Am I just wasting my time even telling them what I know and what I've learned? <coughs> but it says to go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceiveth not in him the lips of knowledge. You know, fools, they like to talk. You know, and a perfect example of this is Facebook. You know, and I'm not going to get up here and pound my chest and pontificate and act like I'm some holy guy because I'm, I'm, you know, down on Facebook. I have a Facebook account, people. All right, I'm on there. Some of you are my friends on Facebook, right? So here's the thing. I'm not against Facebook. There's a lot of good things. But you know what? There's a lot of foolishness on Facebook. There's a lot of just fools just running their mouth, acting like they know everything. They've got it all figured out. And they just like to talk. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, it says, In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. You know one of the dangerous things about just letting your mouth just start to run? Just getting on there and just clickety-clack, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. Post, post, post. And just, you know, getting in a conversation with somebody and just, just letting whatever comes to mind just start to flow out is eventually sinful things will start to come. And if you listen to a fool long enough, you know, they're going to tell you all that's in their heart and you're going to hear the sin come out. You're going to hear everything that's in their heart just come flowing out of their mouth. Because, again, because why? Because that which is in the midst of a fool is made known. They can't keep it in. <coughs> Flat earther. <coughs> Flat earther is what I said. <laughs> You so say, you got flat earthers in your church? I don't know, but I, I guarantee you it won't be long before you find out because they're like people who run marathons or they're like vegans. You know, they got to tell somebody. They just can't keep it in, right? That's what a fool is. <coughs> and you know, it, of course, we'd apply this a lot to, to the unsaved, the, the foolishness of the unsaved to reject God and reject the Bible. But even saved people can be fools. And that's really unfortunate. Because the same person who's indwelt by the Holy Spirit, you know, maybe is even a member of a good local church, has the Bible, has the ability to, to, to read these things and to understand them. They have, you know, wisdom is just right there at their fingertips. So it's so unfortunate when you see a saved person just become a fool and just say foolish things and just live their life like a fool. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, <coughs> it says, Keep thou thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. So that tells me right there that it's possible to go to the house of God and give the sacrifice of a fool. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth. So what's he addressing here? He's talking about the mouth. Be not rash with thy, not with thy mouth. Let not thy heart be utter, uh, hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon the earth. Let thy words be few. Now I love sermons like this because after the church service, everyone's just going to be quiet and go home. Right? Everyone's just going to get real stoic and, and, and just be like, oh, I'm too wise to speak. You know? I don't, you know, I'm not saying we can't have fellowship and talk and joke and, and get to know each other and ask everyone how, you know, that kind of talk. But we don't want to just go to church and just start running our mouth about things that we think we know. We don't know anything because there's a lot of this, you know. People, people want to just put, put themselves out there as some, you know, a, you know, a, a wise one, and, and, and it just becomes evident very quickly that this person is a fool. And here's the thing about wisdom. You know, truly wise people, they don't have to tell you that they're wise. They don't have to wear, a, a, you know, a name tag that says, hello, my name is a wise guy, you know, or whatever. You know, they don't, they don't have to go around making a show of it, letting everyone know, hey, if you need any advice on any area of life, I'm your guy. You know, I've been saved so many years. I've been in church so many years. I've read the Bible so many times. So if there's anything you need help with, you know, just come see me. You know, I'll pencil you in. 
You know, that's a very arrogant, puffed up attitude. But that's sometimes the attitude that you'll find, is that even among saved people, you know, it's, it's like, it's like the, 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 the guy who wants to tell you how humble he is, right? You know, I wrote a book, The World's Three Most Humble Men and How I Met the Other Two. You know, I highly suggest it. You know, it'd be a great help to your spiritual walk. But truly wise people, they don't even have to tell you. We, you know, we can just look at that person, at their life. You know, we can consider the end of their conversation and say, this person has wisdom or this person, you know, is lacking wisdom in an area. Now look, nobody's perfect. Nobody in this room ha is, you know, couldn't stand more wisdom in some area or another. Right. And we all need that. We all need a constantly growing, you know, constantly having to, to be remi even reminded of things that we might have once known. You know, we were wise about something at one point, but, you know, the years went by, that situations changed, and those things, you know, escape us. And we have to be reminded once again, we have to be put in remembrance of those things, though we once knew them, as Paul said. So truly wise people, they don't have to tell you that they are. You know, true wisdom, because here's the thing about a, a wise person, you only know that about a person when that wisdom has been put to the test. When you actually see them have to exercise that wisdom in, in life. You know, it's, uh, the Bible says in James chapter 3, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him stand up and raise his hand and tell the whole church that he is that man. Is that what it says in James 3? It says, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. And we should be able to look at a person's life and see you know, their works that they do meekly for the right motives and say, this person has wisdom in this area. You know, uh, soul winning is just an example that just keeps coming up, but I think it's just a, it's a great one, we, you know. We could, we could go to, you know, a person who's been soul winning and see what, you know, uh, learn from that person. You know, we could, we could see their conversation. How do they do what they do out there? And we could learn from them. And every, you know, that goes for everybody. You know, and it's not just, you know, how does, how, do, how does Brother Corbin do it or whatever. You know, there's lots of things that I go soul winning with people. I was just telling, uh, my, you know, Brother Andrew, we were out soul winning today, and I was just telling him. He said, hey, I liked what you said there on that part of your, your gospel presentation or something like that. And I said, yeah, I got that from somebody else. It was a verse I've been using, and then I heard somebody else use that. I said, man, I'm going to use that. You know, so we can get that kind of wisdom from anybody. You know, anybody that has been out there doing what? The work. You know, and has the meekness. Because here's the thing. Fools, you know, who have no wisdom, they're often the people that like to give advice in all areas of life especially the areas that they have failed at. You know, the, one, the ones that have just made a complete mess of their life in some area, you know, they're going to go around and tell everybody else how to do it right. And this is, this is classic. You see this all the time. People who have failed at marriage. Let me give you marriage advice. People that have failed at child rearing. Let me give you child rearing advice. People who don't go soul winning. You guys aren't doing it right. Let me tell you how to do it. You know, people who don't preach. Let me tell you how you ought to be preaching. You know, you see that on the YouTube comments and things like that. People want to give wisdom, you know, that one, isn't asked for, and two, really isn't even wisdom. It's just them and their pride and their arrogancy and being puffed up, just spouting whatever. You know, and usually it's about areas that they, they themselves have failed at. And when you see that, when you see a person who's just, you know, insisting that they've got this area all figured out, that they're the expert, that they know how to do it, that they're... You know, nobody else can do it better. I'm the, you know, I'm the guy to talk to about this. That usually comes from what's called a need to persuade. Why is it that people have to just go to somebody and say, oh, you're raising your kids all wrong. Let me, can, let me show you, let me tell you all about it, how, how to actually raise children. You know, and their kids are running around like, you know, devils or whatever. And well, they completely failed in this area. It's because they have a need to, to persuade themselves that they haven't failed. And what is that? It's pride. It's arrogancy. You know, the best time, sometimes the best thing to do is to just keep quiet. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to, to lay your hand upon your mouth. If you're in Proverbs, go to Proverbs chapter 17. I'm going to shut down all the fellowship after church tonight. No one's going to say nothing. It's all you're going to hear after the service is just cars starting. Right? Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. 
Because again, it's, it's his lips, it's his mouth that gives him away. So even if a fool, if he learns to just be quiet, you know, he could fly under the radar. And can people, you ever hear that saying, you know, still waters run deep, you know? Quiet people are, are usually very, you know, they, they're always, people say, oh, they must be very wise, you know, very contemplative. Maybe they just haven't figured out what to say. I don't know that I really believe that one, you know? I heard one guy say, I don't trust anybody that doesn't talk. <laughs> so, well, kinda, you got to kind of be wondering what's going on up there, you know? But he's saying here, look, when he holdeth his peace, he is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. <clears throat> Go to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 32. <clears throat> you know, and I don't want to, I guess I just kind of, I wrote this and I didn't really, you know, didn't really have anything in particular in mind, but kind of in the light of some, some things that have taken place, you know, online the last couple of days. You know, and just keep thinking about Facebook. How much this would just apply to social media today? And the Bible says, If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. You know, sometimes people just need to stop talking. They just need to stop. They just, you know, if people find themselves where they've, 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 they've said something stupid, you know, they've given bad advice, they've kind of gotten themselves into a corner with their mouth, they've painted themselves in a corner, What's he saying here? If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. I mean, that's, that's a real gentle way of saying shut up. You know, it's a real you know, poetic saying of, you know, shut it. Basically, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Sometimes the best thing to do is to just keep quiet. And that's why we don't have to go around trying to right every wrong, you know, especially in this area you know, social media. And, you know, I don't want to harp on it, but it's, it's just a fact. Of, it's a major part of our lives now that we didn't ask for, social media. It's part of our life, whether we like it or not. And we can limit it and things like that, but it, it can really have a lot. It can have a very negative impact on us if we let it. <clears throat> but let's move on here. It says, you know, the point of the, 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 the sermon tonight is to flee from fools. Don't, don't bother wasting your time with some bozo on the Internet. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, I, I appreciate it, but I don't need anybody coming to my defense on, on uh, you know, social media. And I get I've seen people do it, and I've done it myself in the past when people have attacked my past, you know, Pastor Anderson. God, who do you know, blah, 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 and try and correct him. And then I realize Pastor's probably just, he's probably okay. You know, he's probably all right with the criticism. You know, if somebody is going to attack me over, I don't know what, you know, it's probably my weight, if anything. <laughs> That's actually what they go after the most, right? We just chalk it up as little guy syndrome. That's what, that's what us big guys do. But, you know, I don't need everybody going, going on there, hey, you need to leave Brother Corbin alone, or this or that. You know, it's, a lot of times we're not even, you know, listening to these people. And it, it really is just a waste of time. It's just a waste of time to try and go and, you know, argue with a fool, argue with somebody who's not going to receive correction, <coughs> because it'll just waste your time. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 23, In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury, you know, being poor. You miss out on a lot. Well, you, know, you, you know, you're not a profitable person if all we're doing is just talking and arguing, especially when you're just arguing with fools. You know, I delete a lot of emails and voicemails that come into the church. I say, why do you do that? Because a lot of it's coming from people who are just fools. They just want to argue over dumb things. That I would just want to say stupid things, you know, and it would be a real waste of time. It'd be a real misappropriation of church funds for me to sit there and respond to every dumb email and every stupid voicemail that people. And I'm and I'm not saying there aren't ones that come in that are legitimate and you want to help and we respond and all of that, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that are fools, you know. And and you know, and, and modern technology, as wonderful it is, has unfortunately also given a platform to a lot of people that would otherwise just have to be the only people who would know how stupid they are are their immediate family and their, fan, and their, and their whatever friends they have and whatever, and whatever people that are unfortunate enough to work with them. Say so you're being harsh. It's the truth, though. But now that, they, you know, now that there's the Internet and everything else, now every fool can just get on there and just, you know, let, you know, what does it say again? 
That which is in the midst of a fool is made known. They can just go out there and just make it known to the world. I am a fool. <clears throat> you know, don't listen to fools. Don't waste your time with them. All fools want to do is strive. They love to just strive with people. Because again, you have to remember, a fool thinks that they're right and you're wrong. And they're so proud and, and they're scoffers and they cannot be corrected that you know they think they've got it all figured out. They would love to just get it in, get in with, uh, get into it with you, so they can just show everybody how much smarter they are, in their mind. Okay, go to Proverbs eighteen verse six. You say you're being hard on the fools. Not nearly as hard as the Bible is. The Bible's got a lot of negative things about say about foolish people, and people who are fools. Look at Proverbs eighteen verse six. A fool's lips enter into contention. You know, contention, strife, arguing, debate. That's what a fool's lips do. It's all he wants to talk about. And what is the Bible's remedy? And his mouth calleth for strokes. And he's not talking about, you know, joining the rowing team. Stroke, stroke. No one gets that, okay. He's talking about, you know, he needs to get smacked in the mouth. That's what he's saying there. A, a fool's lip enter into contention as mouth calleth for strokes. <clears throat> a fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. That's some harsh language about fools, but it's the truth. <clears throat> that their lips enter only into contention. So it doesn't make any sense to sit there and argue with fools, to get in debate with people. I'm not saying you can't have you know, a conversation with somebody that has a different opinion than you or a different point of view. And, and, and have a discussion where you both, you know, you profit from it. Where it's not just this heated, you know, arguing, or it's not just a bunch of name calling or something, where people who have two different points of view can talk and actually, you know, at least make the other person understand where they're coming from. You know, I'm not saying you can't have profitable discussions with somebody you disagree with. But do you think that's, I'll tell you what, that is not the majority of what's taking place on Facebook and everywhere else. You know, I say Facebook the most because I'm, I guess I'm old now and only old people use Facebook. So that's why I keep using that one. <coughs> that's not the majority of what's going on on social media. People having just, you know, deep, meaningful conversations where, you know, though they might have different opinions, they're both, you know, coming to a place of understanding with one another. A lot of it is just fools entering into contention with their mouth you know, or with their fingertips. <coughs> you know, in another place, again, that, that we, you know, it says a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. You know, that just makes me think about, you know, the person that we see out soul winning, the person who's, you know, just so proud at the door. You know, we ran, we, uh, we ran, you know, we ran into that guy last week who wanted to, he would listen, but he, you remember that? Oh yeah, go ahead and tell me. Tell me what you know. And he just wants to start arguing. You know, his whole demeanor was just, let me talk, and he let me talk just long enough to where he could, like, all right, I'm going to jump in now and tell you everything that I know and how I made all these other Christians look foolish. And when, you know, attempting to do that to me as well, but he failed. But because uh, <laughs> I didn't get upset, I was able to just walk away and say, hey, have a nice day. Right. But you know what? That dummy at the door, that that foolish, proud person, he's his own destruction. Yep. And it's unfortunate. And rather than entering the contention with them and saying, well, let me tell you why you're wrong. And, you know, explain all that. You know, they're they are their own worst enemy. Their 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 mouth is their destruction and the, their lips are the snare of their soul. Oh, I already know it. I already read it. You know, I already know what the Bible says. No, nah, no thanks. You know, I already got that figured out. Pff, I don't believe that, but, you know, they're just scoffing, mocking. And, you know, in the flesh we go, well, let me just prove you wrong and why the Bible is right and let me get into it with you. That's, you're not doing it. You're not accomplishing anything. Whether it's at the door or online or wherever, you're not going to accomplish anything except enter into contention with somebody who cannot be corrected. Go over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'll begin reading in verse 23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. 
foolish and unlearned questions, avoid. It doesn't say, you know, when you come across a foolish and unlearned question, sit down and try and straighten that person out and show them the error of their ways. That says avoid them. Depart from a, 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 a fool when thou perceivest not in him the lips of understanding. Avoid foolish questions, foolish and unlearned questions. Knowing they do gender strifes, a fool's lips you know, enter into contention. You see how it's all tying together? It's just over and over again. He's saying, look, it's unlearned questions. Avoid them. They, they just gender strifes. That's all they're there to do. They just want to ask these questions or put these arguments out there. You know, if you misquote the word of God, is it still the word of God? Oh, man, that's deep. It's so deep I can't even understand what you're getting at. Well, if you misquote the word of God, is it the word of God anymore? Ooh, man. I mean, my faith was shaken. I had to go home and pray and read my whole Bible cover to cover in one sitting and just really, you know, question things. No, it's a foolish, unlearned question that's all the only point of the being asked that question at the door by that fool, quite frankly, was to gender strife, to enter into contention with me. And the servant of the Lord, verse 24, must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. <clears throat> he must be gentle unto all men, even the fool. I mean, it says all men. So how do you be gentle unto a fool? You just leave him to his foolishness. Just let him be a fool. Let, him, let his lips be the, his own destruction. Let his lips be his own snare to his soul. You know, beating him up is not going to accomplish anything. You know, harping on him, getting after him, it's not going to accomplish anything. Go over to Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. <clears throat> I woke up with this verse on my mind this morning. <clears throat> and uh, after having you know written a sermon and, and not really knowing where it would fit in, but now it's kind of making sense to me is that you know we shouldn't we should avoid foolish and unlearned questions. We shouldn't get into contentions with these fools wherever we find them in life, online, at the door, wherever. Some fool just wants to enter into contention. The Bible says to avoid them because they gender stripes and to be gentle unto all men. And the best way you can be gentle unto a fool is to, to avoid them. Because we think, well, if we get after, if we find a fool, maybe we could correct them and we can instruct them and we could show them and we could teach them something and they could stop being a fool. But that's not the case. You can't, a lot of fools, I mean, I mean, you could, you could work on a, a child when foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction just so drive it far from him. But it comes a point where if that hasn't happened in a person's life, if they go on, and there's God's grace and God's mercy and all that, I understand that. But a lot of people, they've never had that foolishness dealt with from a child. And it's, I'm telling you, it's just ingrained in who they are. They're not going to change. They're too foolish to change. Look at Proverbs chapter 27, verse 22. Though thou shouldest bray a fool in mortar among wheat with a pestle, Yet his foolishness will not depart from him. Now, a mortar among, it says, a, a brain with a mortar with a pestle, right? We all know what mortar and pestle is. You ever seen the little bowl with the thing where you can grind, you know, grains and powders and things like that? He's saying, look, if you could take a fool somehow and you could put that fool in there and grind him to powder and then maybe you could go, well, here's the foolishness and just, you can't because I believe what that's showing us is that you cannot correct a fool because it reaches a point with some people, they've become so foolish and it's just so ingrained, it's the very fiber of their being. It's just, you just went from having a whole fool to a powdered fool. You know, it's fool, just add water now. <coughs> you know, just pour this fool in your drink and down it. That's what it's showing us here, I believe is that, look, you could grind him down to, to just the most base form and you still can't separate that foolishness out of him. That's why the best thing, the best way to, to a servant of a Lord should treat a fool is to just leave them alone, to just depart. Just leave them to their foolishness and let them run their mouth. You know, and I, and I keep bringing it up with the social media thing, you know, and YouTube comments. It used to just drive me crazy when I would see these scoffers and these mockers come on you know, Pastor Anderson's channel just start railing and running their mouth and saying stupid things. 
And it's like they, and here's the thing, they come in like waves. Then I realized there would be like, you'd get to know certain avatars and certain names. You'd know who they were online. And, and eventually, you know, they'd, they'd fade away. Like, because now I'm going back through sermons that are six years old, seven years old, and making the clips. And I'm going back. Sometimes I'll look at the comments. And I'll be like, oh, I remember that, that fool. Man, I haven't heard from him in a few years. Oh, I remember that, that scoffer. Where are they now? You know, they, they just disappear. And then a whole other wave comes through. And they think, oh, we're the first ones to do this. But they've never heard this one before. You know, oh, got them now. And then after a few years, they're gone. And the next wave comes in. So what good would it do to sit there and just beat your head against a wall trying to fix a fool who can't be fixed just to have him disappear and a brand new one come in? you got to start all over again. <clears throat> Look, the servant of the Lord must not strive. But be gentle unto all men. Now apt to teach, patient, and meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance, the acknowledging of the truth. Look, there's some people that you can instruct in meekness. <clears throat> you know, but it's not the fools. There are some people that you can reach that, you know, they're opposing themselves, but they're just lost people. You know, they want to hear, they want to know the truth. They're open to it. They're not foolish, they're not scoffers, they're not full of pride. You know, and you can teach those people. You know, even save people. You know, Christians that, you know, they've come to a place in their life where they realize, hey, I don't know everything. I don't have it all figured out. You know, and then they can receive instruction. They can receive it. <coughs> so, don't waste your time with fools. Flee from fools, the Bible says. That's the title of the sermon, is to flee from them. <coughs> the Bible says... Uh, where are we? Proverbs chapter 14. We'll close it here. I told you I was going to have a short sermon last week, and I think it was not. <laughs> so I'll try it. I'm not, I don't know how long it's going to be tonight, but it will be a shorter one. Proverbs chapter 14. <clears throat> I don't know where it's at, but I lot, my notes were sloppy. But the Bible says in Proverbs, okay, it's in there. You know, get, your, get your phone out after service if you don't believe me. But it says, The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of the fools of fools is deceit. You should just leave these people alone. They're, they want to deceive. They want to enter con into contention. That's their folly. That's what makes them fools. You know, we have enough on our plate as Christians. We have enough on our plate as, as God-fearing people who want to raise our families, win souls, serve in the local church. We've got enough to do. Look, we've all got enough to figure out for ourselves what's right, what's wrong. You know, enough, we've got enough wisdom. How do I put this nicely? We're all in need of wisdom ourselves. We have enough to try and gain and learn and understand for our own life to sit there and try to figure out how to get some fool to quit doing what they're doing or saying what they're saying. <clears throat> so just don't strive with them. Just leave them meekly and just leave them there. <clears throat> so let's just close it right there. You know, let's, let's flee from fools. <clears throat>